hey, hey, you're back in the garage with Easy Jeezy. This is turning into the 1776 versus the 1600 shootout. Oh my goodness. This was a surprise. An ugly surprise for me. My 1776 did exactly the same as the single port, or the, the 1600 dual port. Now that and I'd always been told that the single ports make more torque and we went up this hill, my test hill, at 2000 RPM and it was a dead even tie. I had changed engines and went back and it was a dead even tie. And so that was with the 1.25 ratio rockers on the intakes only and this stock 34 pick 3 on this manifold. So, I uh, I thought, okay, I'm going to put those left over. You get a set of eight when you buy a package deal. I said, I'm going to get the set of eight, and I'm going to put them on here. And I, I tell you, I think I spent three hours trying to get these rocker shafts. Every time I'd put them on, you know, something's too tight. Something's too loose. This is the worst set of heads you could ever imagine. All the tips of your valves should be the same height. And these aren't. They, look, at, look at, this is a thing that I should tell you right here. You should have two to three threads showing on this side of the nut. In order to get the proper oiling and for everything to work right. These are beautiful shafts and... Uh, I'm going to take them apart because I'm going to add this shim because all of a sudden I've driven it very, very little, probably 30 miles. And uh, I think I started it up here and I, I, I had this little stutter in it. And I kept changing, I changed the spark plug on the bad cylinder. I put a whole new set of spark plug wires on it and I still had this little stutter. And I don't think my hearing's that bad where I could not hear something like this. Look at this. This is supposed to be six thousandths. And I got play back and forth here that I didn't. So I'm going to take this apart and show you. And this is not saying anything. Oh, let's, let's see. That might be too tight. <laughs> Therein lies the problem. It's either too tight or too loose. There's a lot of things you can do. Um, you could use a mirror and some emery cloth, and you could uh, work the sides of the block. You could, uh, if you had a lathe, I don't have all those fancy tools. And I'm making this whole series of videos based on the individual who doesn't have fancy tools and just gets a hold of a 1600 and trying to figure out some little add-ons that he can get to get a little boost in horsepower. Okay, so these are all adjusted wrong and you change that by the shims that go underneath these towers. And it seemed like I had to put two 60,000 shims underneath it. Normally if you use these swivel foot adjusters you can get by with one on a on a fully stock setup where your cylinders don't have shims in them and you have the 52 cc heads where whatever they came generally the push rods will be the right length and it will work you don't want to get this wrong because you put on you have to watch for clearances it's very tight you uh you can <laughs> you can take these blocks and flip them around it's just part of the puzzle in order to get that right. Now, you're not going to have as much contact area, but for stock springs and stock setup, but you want these little slots to be on top. That's like an oil reservoir, and it, it helps lubricate the sides of these, uh, the whole setup. I, I, I was just getting ready to pull this thing out, and I thought, before I do, I'm going to check the overall stroke of the intake like we did on the other one. I think when we were done, we got 355, something like that. So we'll see what it is on this one, <clears throat> supposedly with a good stock cam and only 3,000 miles on the engine. And then when I pull the shafts apart, 
to put this shim in I'll show you that when you buy a new head or get a rebuilt head you know you're getting a quality product if all the tips of the valves come out at the same place then you want the three angle valve job and you want all the other little goodies and that's what you get when you get a new head they generally mass produce those things and they check the tooling and they have it set up and that's how it is when you take it to some guy to be you know grind the valves and stuff and they're just doing it by hand with a stone the, you know if a guy's experienced and he's done a lot of them and the there's some consistency there it probably wouldn't even notice the difference but I don't know something happened here I didn't get a very good job on these heads and I knew it it seemed to me like the intakes were out farther than the exhaust and with the stock rocker shafts it didn't seem to make that much difference but now when I'm putting these aftermarket ones you should have more threads sticking out here in order to get the proper oiling what you don't want is the head of this uh, swivel foot and I had swivel foots on it before on the stock the stock rocker arm stock swivel foot if you get this in too far if you don't get your geometry right with the shims under the towers then when it goes down you're gonna pop this right out of the socket or break off the head and I had more people tell me that uh, those CB performance swivel feet will break and I haven't had no problem I ran it on this engine for 3,000 miles and now this is the set that came with this new setup and I'm using those and I only put like 30 miles on it but man that thing is loose and so it's the point is I'm glad that I pulled the head and it's like I'm not kind of in the mood I cut the grass today I'm kind of tired and it's a little chilly so <laughs> I'm glad I pulled that valve cover and, and had a look in here and I'm gonna get this fitted and adjusted and then back together and off is because these are the uh, CB performance uh, solid rocker shaft setups and I had trouble getting the right combination of shims and the first time I tried it I thought it was too tight but uh, we're gonna jam this in here just to <laughs> to show you if I could put it back yeah any place <laughs> just stick it in there okay now I, you want about a minimum of five thousandths. You want to allow for heat expansion. And there is slots on these shafts. And it just seemed like it was a little too tight to me before. Gosh. You know, guys uh, and gals, uh, the... Uh, <laughs> Oh, I had it all in my head. I was going to say it, and I can't think of it. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Open enrollment for a camera girl has been extended for an undetermined amount of time. And along with your resume, please include a picture of your boat. I appreciate that very much. There's just so darn many times I need that extra pair of hands. That might be too tight. Seeing that, therein lies a problem. You, anytime you get something too tight, you're going to get heat and you're going to get drag. <laughs> See, therein lies the sweetness of having the, the stock rocker shaft. And, you know, if you got a stock cam and you're just doing these 1.25s, I was reading that one of those old hot rod books and they were saying the 1.4s on a stock rocker shaft. I can't imagine ever even considering doing that. And they've got a picture of it in the book. I just about fell off my chair. In there of my ride up the hill, I didn't get for some reason I can't find any footage of me going up the hill with the stock 1600 it seems like I was coming down the hill and I made video but I can't find it going up the hill so I don't know what happened there and then uh, I made a uh, two videos with this 1776 the one was just the way I built it stock everything and then the second time was with these racial rockers on the intakes and now I'm finding this one so loose. I'm gonna 
I'm going to pay a little closer attention to getting this set up right because uh, I picked up a couple hundred RPM. I felt it all the way up the hill. And I never heard no ticking or banging or knocking. Doggone it. But I'm glad I looked. And I'm going to definitely pull the push rods out of there and see if the tip of it is broke or mashed in. And remember, I used a reground stock crankshaft. No, a stock crankshaft and reground lifters. Now I'm wishing I hadn't done that. So, but anyhow, there's that dove over there. <laughs> I'm gonna get me a slingshot. <laughs> I I I tease it like this. <laughs> Alright, let's get this rocker assembled up and see what the hell's going on there. Well, looky here. The plot thickens. I went to take it off and I thought, man, that's loose. Evidently, when I was taking that valve cover off, I was loosening the nut. Now let's see how that... <laughs> Holy mackerel! See how you can jump to conclusions? Actually, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Just, where was it? Was it this valve cover? No, I think it was the other side. We were taking it off and that one got a little bit stuck or something I'm gonna have to keep a close eye on that and remember that but that's still I don't like that where's my little shim here I'm, I'm still gonna take it off and and let me lean it in there camera girl yeah see yeah I need less than that Although, even with this much, that's about, <sighs> I think I stuck some feeler gauges in there. I think it was 25 or something. And that's about what this shim is. You got to have room for expansion. And on performance, you want a little bit of slop. I think I got an applicant. For the camera girl. She's coming around the corner here. Hey, what are you doing there? <laughs> come on. Are you applying for the camera girl position? Yeah, of course. Well, come on up. Ready? Come on up. Here, go. <laughs> come on. You play along with me. I got a YouTube channel and I'm making a, a video. Oh, awesome. and, I, and I was just saying, I need an extra pair of hands. All so right. You, I can help you. See? See, I got me a camera, girl. Awesome. All <laughs> right. What are you doing? <laughs> Working on my Volkswagen. And what's your name, ma'am? My name's Andy. All right. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> that ought to be fun. <laughs> awesome. What do you guys think? My new camera girl. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> now I have to answer her questions. <laughs> fair trade. Fair's fair. Okay. As you'll recall on that last engine... We ended up with a total of 355, so this is an engine with 3,000 miles on it and a stock cam and the same company's racial rockers. So we're going to go through a stroke here. I've got it set up just like we did in that other video, and I'm going to use a crescent wrench and just applying pressure to the tip of the wrench or the frame or anything is making it move but I think I'm on the heel of the cam and we're gonna start going through the rotation and counting the revolutions so there's 100 200 300 And I think that's about it. Or about. 
it's hard to get that tip but we're about 387 thousandths lift and you'll note that on a uh, like an angle 110 uh, you're about 420 thousandths lift with the 1.11 1 ratio rockers and this is the stock cam which is a split duration which helps with the reversion issue and this one does have the header exhaust on it but it is only the single port head and the other engine had the stock exhaust on it but it's a dual port head and it it has been modified uh, somewhat even though it does have a lot of miles on it so um, this one did pick up a little bit of power at the same 2000 rpm was the 35 miles an hour in third gear and then this one kept pulling a little bit harder but it's still not don't don't get into that single ports better than dual port you do what you want you do what you want I have a lot more options here with the dual port and I have two spark plug uh, helicoils in inserts on this I think one of them's come loose and I have a lot more carburation options and I was just pretty happy last summer getting 27 miles to the gallon but when I saw that 32 miles to the gallon for the same thing and I have the whole setup so I'm this is quite the battle between the 1776 single port and the 1600 dual port I'm just uh, as amazed as many of you are and I don't know who's jumping up and down happy or what I'm gonna do the other valve uh, next to it I might as well do the exhaust valve because I'm curious we yeah 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 because this is the stock cam with the exhaust valve so this comes out with zero cam wear basically I put plenty of zinc in this thing and did the break in right and this this engine's 120 pounds per cylinder and 300 and you know I'll just say 300 and 90 thousandths lift 387 you're gonna split hairs with me go 385 thousandths lift that's that's uh, impressive and I could feel it in the seat of the pants so there you have it on that I'm still trying to catch my breath after that uh, application for the camera girl but it seemed like her present job was interfering with my schedule so <sighs> oh well <laughs> all right onward this is the exhaust valve right next to it that's just me on the wrench that's the flexing in the frame horns that's holding the engine pretty amazing huh all right One, two, no. What was that? Something's in the way of something. Oh, the knob's hitting on the uh, intake valve. Back it up, back it up. thing or another let's see You piece of junk.
man. This is harder than trying to hit a prairie dog at a thousand yards. Oh, he smokes. Now, how does that look? I wanted to get it as straight with the valve stem as you can. And you'll note right here the swivel foot. See the angle that's right here? You want to make sure that you don't have any contact there. If you get that in a bind, that's when you're going to snap these things off or have problems with them. <clears throat> now, zero this thing back out. We'll try that again. Oh, are you still on? Are you kidding me? Now what? Hear that dove in the background? <laughs> Holy mackerel! Gotta go around three times. I missed it. Should have gone backwards. Here we go. One. Two, three. Wow. <laughs> Man, that's just by the book, isn't it? Three hundred and twenty-two. Isn't that? Isn't that what? Uh, that's what the book called up. That's the stock one point one on the exhaust side. So we got, yeah, I should, <laughs> now I'm thinking I should have taken them off that other one, but this still is not set up properly because I should have three threads exposed, but I satisfied myself to know that it does make a difference and that gives me incentive to, uh, put the stock ones back on and say the hell with it <laughs> you know for that little bit of of bump and horsepower I don't know like I say it, it's all in your head it's all in your head you know and it's that gives you that little edge when you're out riding with your buddy and if he's got the same engine you know maybe he's got an old worn out single port and and he said, damn, he's pulling away with that single port, you know, and he's got a double dual port, you know, or whatever. That thing runs pretty good for a... Uh, what size do you say it was? Just playing head games, you know. But practically wise, well, that makes me feel good. Now, I'm going to do that other intake. Except you can't watch me struggle. Okay. We're on number one intake now, and I was noticing this. We don't have a degree wheel here, but notice the exhaust valve behind this intake. It's going to finish its closing. It's going to come out. There's no dial indicator on it, but notice the how close that comes out before the intake so you're pushing it out, the piston is pushing out the exhaust gases and then when the gauge starts moving it's pulling in the intake gases. So watch here. 
Exhaust is coming out. And it's still, it's still coming out. <laughs> Let's see here. Okay, it's still the. I'm at 30 degrees, 25 degrees before top dead center. This is important, guys. Stock camshaft. It's the intake valve is sucking fuel in now. As it just finished, there was an overlap there. It seems to me. One, two, three. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Twenty. There's almost Seven thousandths difference between these two intakes. Is that what I just saw? We started off the first intake. Ah, oh, this header's right in the way. Oh, that's better. That's better. Okay. So that's uh, 385. This is closer to 385. There could be enough difference there in my setup for that. Let's go see if it comes back to zero. Yep. So we're we're within a couple of thousands, and uh, interesting. I thought there was bigger difference on the intake and exhaust on the lift. Oh, this is an intake. We're comparing the two intakes. The other one was, what did I say, three hundred ninety thousandths, and this one's like three hundred and eighty-seven. No, that's 10. That's pretty close. Pretty close to the same. Close enough, I ain't gonna worry about it. Just collecting data! You know, when I had this rocker stud bolt for that cap adapter, the cover, torqued to 18 pounds. And that's interesting to note, when I took that cover loose, that whole thing started to unturn with it. Man, that had me shook up. I thought, uh-oh, how come I didn't hear that and because it wasn't there and I have my valves uh, adjusted at four thousandths clearance so okay I'm not gonna worry oh. Oh, we got everything here might as well might as well do that exhaust too what the heck huh Starting to warm up, be a nice day. One more guy says, Oh, you love working on Volkswagens. Why don't you fix mine? I think I'll scream. <laughs> don't, do I look like I'm having fun here, guys?
I must, huh? Intake, compression, power, exhaust. So intakes out. I'll have to go around a little bit. Ah. Either way. Oh, that was right on the money, honey. I thought that was open. Oh, that's going in. We got it. This is the exhaust. You know, as long as you're not standing over a solvent tank cleaning parts, that's what's really bad, but a little music can help that. Alright, here we go. <laughs> what the hell's going on here? I thought I was there. Look for overlap. One, two, guys 250 wasn't the other exhaust valve 322 what happens <laughs> something's gone wrong here maybe that's where my stutter is oh there's something in a bind my setup is wrong Something, something moved here. Oh, look at that. What the hell? Ah, that was scary for me.
See all the time it takes and I edit this out. Okay, that's going in. I want it out all the way. And razor wet. Is that sun in your eyes? Tough. Put on your sunglasses. Oh. <laughs> Is it Miller time? I don't think I'm gonna get this engine swapped today. Mowing the lawn was enough. Give me a break, guys. And then I have to go in and one. Two, three, twenty is what I'm looking for. Close enough. Eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Ah. Okay, this one, so, 19, 18, 17, 3, 22, and 3, 17, on exhaust, close enough for government work, because I ain't got nothing to change it, not at this stage of the game, well, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, yeah, I guess I'll throw some, uh, I'll throw me going up the hill, call it good, okay? And this was three or four days ago. Yeah. Suddenly I'm just exhausted, I can't think of anything clever or funny to say. <laughs> so, I'm trying to get something up for you guys, so keep this thing moving along it seems like a lot of people are interested and got plans on building something hopefully this stuff will all be helpful so catch you later thanks for watching thanks for subbing easy jeezy out hang on and I'll put those uh, climbs up the hill alright one more thing <clears throat> I wanted to take I wanted to tighten this up a little bit here now, I found a shim just by measuring these assortments here. Some old stock shims, other rocker changes I've done. They give you quite an assortment here. It's this one. You have to have it on the head, bolted to the head, to really, you can't just do this on the table like this and expect to get it right. And I've had this thing apart numerous times trying to get it right. And I'm just, just trying to, you know, show you that so at any rate now one side's really tight to the head itself inside there so I'm working from the other side and I only have to go in this far so just follow along here this is the shim I want I'm, I want to add this one so I'm going to put it on my little finger remind me where I put it because in about 30 seconds I'm going to say what do I do with that shim uh. This is a this is a very nice product from CB Performance. Now this outside exhaust valve is an ex, is a stock rocker. You gotta. I didn't. I'm not worried about these things coming loose. I'm just not worried about it. Some guys can get anal. There's a lock washer there. There's a really nice recessed cup that goes over the edge. I don't remember seeing that on some other brands. I think that's that's a nice touch. I've I don't want to lose my setup here, and there's two of them. I thought I had three. Maybe it was the other side.
Oh, I just, I think I just did exactly opposite side that I wanted to. Because all these were facing away from me before. Oh well. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Now, see this, what I was talking about earlier was there's a little performance trick that some people do. Oh my god, are you kidding me? This one's got the cut in it. Oh heck! I thought this was a bad one. Is it galling the shaft? This is one that I did. I tried cutting between these two oil holes and I thought I boogered it up. Here it is right here. <laughs> I lost track of it. But you don't have to do that when you got this groove here. They cut it into the shaft and you don't have to worry about that. So anyhow, lay it in there the way you took it out. The block. The next one. Now I've only got the one shim in there. And I think I'm happy with the, the narrow one. Now, you can feel these. These are, these are stamped out of steel. So there's a rounded side and there's a rough side. So I want the rounded side next to my rocker shaft. I don't care about this thing here. I just want to be nice. And you don't want to scratch or gall this. You want this to go on nice. And as I was building this, I slathered the heck out of this thing with lubricate. It's been run in and it's all slathered up. Some brands uh, have like a set screw to lock this and it's supposed to help with the noise factor but I'm letting this one float and it didn't seem to be noisy before so now we're gonna just put this back on and you'll maybe can see from there or note that this at the edges of this hole there's a little bit of play because all if it was exact just the hole drilled it might not line up with the studs on your particular head. So they give you just a slight little back and forth play. This is uh, nice and I'm looking at it with this thing's got like 30 miles on it so I'm looking at it to see if there's any wear signs and I want I know this side is right because I haven't disturbed it so I'm just gonna match this side and put my groove up and then the side next to the block doesn't come with the shim you don't put a shim in there it didn't it didn't when it was stock so don't do it now what's what's something's happened something's happened what happened okay I don't know what that was that I felt <laughs> now I'm gonna put the thin one Is there two or three here? There's just two. I thought there was three. It's a lot easier when you got the head laying right here when you're building up your engine and you know you're going to do this stuff ahead of time than it is trying to dink with it on the engine. And it wasn't clattering before, but 30 thousandths was just a little more than I felt good about if it's got moved to room if it's got room to move it around that means it's going to be moving back the tip of your valve of the valve adjuster and this has got swivel feet so it's not that big a deal but with uh, this is just this is just nice and the first time I started it up it clattered for quite a while because the the oil has to come I should have showed you that the oil comes up through your push rod then goes underneath here it goes into that groove crosses over to the other hole comes over here and comes out on your end of your valve stem and in this place on that swivel foot and those swivel feet are sloppy because it it's made so that if you have a higher lift cam it's going to articulate more the nice thing about a ratio rocker is your cam and your lifter never change. The valve opening changes because of the ratio. The more of a ratio that you have, the harder it is on everything up here. And if you're going for high RPM, it's even worse. So I'm going to 
stay away from those 1.4s unless you really know what you're doing. If you have experience, then you can get into that weird stuff, you know, 1.3s, and I, I don't think there's any point in looking, if you find a deal on some needle bearing ones, you know, that would just be for a dragster. Even in the in the recommendations, when they talk about those things, they'll say, oh, they'll last up to 40,000 miles. Well, what does that tell you? If a stock one's going to last 100,000, and a aftermarket one's only going to last 40, you know, what are you going to do? Push it to the 40? You going to, you know, start worrying about it at 35,000 miles or going to be in the back of your mind? Or it's like, oh, I was planning on going on a long trip or doing something that you didn't know you were going to do. Oh, well, you know what I'm saying. I, I apologize because I just don't know the knowledge level. And if you read through my comments, you'll see that there's people that they're telling me what to do because they have more experience and then there's people that don't have any experience at all and it's like what is he talking about you know and it the light will come on it'll all come to you when uh, uh, when you start doing it yourself and if you're if if it doesn't turn out right or you have questions don't continue on now this one article I read they said you could use the backside but this is just a lot smaller surface area and you'll note that on these they're pretty well rounded but it seems to me if I remember right on the stock ones you had a a nice flat cut on the top and then a sharper corner on the bottom and you gotta make sure that things aren't touching and binding up that's that's where you get breakage and have problems and bad experiences I don't know I've I've had different stuff go wrong I've broke stuff before <laughs> Lord knows I broke stuff before and you know racers go through that all the time but you know they're usually have a business buy things wholesale prices or they have sponsors that help with them and they expect some of that stuff sometimes it's automatic whether they break things or not they automatically go through an engine you go to the drags it always amazes me they'll take those top fuel cars apart outside in the under a tarp with the wind blowing and they're just swapping out bearings and pulling out pistons and pushing in new stuff because they they got to do some stuff the guys over there on the clutch disc you know that's no big deal he's resurfacing the clutch disc and these other guys are just got the oil pan off and oh my god i'm just thinking of myself all the dirt in the air people are wandering by looking over shoulders winds blowing but those that's you know you're gonna run a wide open throttle for three or four seconds three or four seconds and then they got the engine down you know what did I heard one time the life expectancy of one of those top fuel engines is three minutes but if you're doing a, a what are the, they don't do quarter mile runs anymore they go they'd go too darn fast now they're doing less than that I don't know I don't think it's eighth mile but man they're getting over 200 miles an hour in an eighth mile for crying out loud <clears throat> yeah, there's a certain amount of safety <laughs> involved there at some point, but I'm real pleased with these scat, the scat setup, and uh, for what we're doing, you probably could get by with just the stock ones, and uh, if that was a better head and all the valve tips were right, let's go over there. I'll put these back on. <clears throat> <sighs> hang on, hang on, hang on! Maybe you can see it from here. I can see it from here. Can you see it? Look at the ends of those valves. Look at the retainers on the end of that. They, uh, they're not all exactly the same. The intakes stick out farther than the outside exhaust. The outside... So how are you supposed to get your geometry perfect with something like that? That's, that's a bummer. <clears throat> And I want to look at my push rod. Oh, oh, that's okay. <laughs> Sometimes you'll see a shiny spot on these stock push rods. You'll see a shiny spot if they uh, they start flexing. But I only took this up to like 4,500 a couple times to see if it would do it. And uh, 
Yeah, the, what I'm looking for is shiny spots and see if the, the steel head is pushing into the push rod. When you start getting in those 1.4 rockers and bigger lift cams, uh, it'll rub on the push rod tubes and they got these wider push rod tubes they call windage tubes. And I was talking about these shims and I did not like where that set. So I have, there's two shims under each one. I'm going to see if I can get a little better. Um, geometry with just, see taking one off. I tried this before. One was too much the other way. Getting late in the day, getting dinner time. first few times you do this, it's not fun. And you want to just start your push rods and see you get one falls over too far. And then find it around with that. This is, this is where the power is, guys. This is free horsepower right here. Basically, this is the good stuff. Now, if I took it out, they're probably all going to be tight, and this is right in the dirt. And I use wave washers, and I go to 18 pounds, and it really bothers me that that nut came off. And see, <clears throat> right now I'm in a situation where I barely have, I don't even know if I'll be able to start it. <sighs> what happened there? What you do is you get these uh, chromoly racer rocker studs and they have more threads on them. Oh, my wave washer came off. So now I'm going to rotate the engine because I can't get enough thread. I got to get those. It's trying to push the valve in. I'm not fine if you got your two intakes all the way out. Say so I'm gonna have to uh this is the one that's caught creating the problem and it's it's in too far anyhow. So I don't know if this stuff you want to watch or if you just want to see the finished product. I, I figure it's good for you guys to see me struggle. So if, if all I do is show you the last few seconds and everything goes smooth and then you start having trouble, then you're going to think it's going to scare you. But, and like, you can do all this. It wouldn't be you wouldn't be doing this in a car, and this is why I was a little bit leery anyhow, because you'd be doing this uh, on an engine stand. This is this is unnecessary struggle doing this in the car, and that's why I put the stock ones on that other engine to begin with. Shim out. I might as well just go through and loosen all of these.
because I want I took that shim out so I could get more threads exposed. See how it's tightening up here? And I, I felt it was too tight. If I get the two th threads showing on the outside, it pulls the adjuster too far in on the inside. Something's going to be working, you know. You're going to have some spring fight, yeah, on some on one of these. Thanks for a long video. <laughs> Start this thing up and go hauling buns down the road. Let me get my torque wrench. Eighteen pounds. get my distributor cap off and get number one top dead center or two or whatever's closest and then I gotta go through and adjust my valves and of course I'm over here on three oh, I may have picked up a couple thousand just by changing the uh, geometry here Taking out that shim. Okay, coming up on two. That's just as good as any. Doesn't have to be one. There's two. You get these, uh, oh, I know someone's gonna say they got one of those cute little tools <laughs> that holds holds everything. I just do it like this. I struggle. If I'm not struggling, I'm not having fun, right? Okay. Now, here's why I had that other shim in there. Four thousandths is what I'm going to do them at because I'm watching them. Now, see, I thought that head was too close. And this is the stock one. But, you know, it's not... Swivel feet aren't stock. And that's why you have to put the shim underneath there to compensate for the thickness of that swivel foot, okay? It's all a pain in the butt. <laughs> it's not stock <laughs> but it makes your these are new valves I hope
Okay. Now we'll go continue to one. God, this would be like watching paint dry. Hey guys. There's birds in the back. The battery died and I didn't realize it. <clears throat> it's the next day and I just came out to the garage. I'd finished up my job <clears throat> and got it running better. From where the battery died, <clears throat> I put the whole thing in there, adjusted my valve clearance, and I even went to four thousandths instead of uh, six thousandths because six thousandths was going to back the swivel foot out farther closer to the rocker arm. And on one of these valves, since they're all a mess like they are, um, it looked to me, I couldn't get a, a feeler gauge in there and I couldn't see behind it so I just assumed that it might be a problem and I don't want to have breakdowns on the road and I don't want little bits of metal coming off and going through my system so I took it back off again so <clears throat> the first time I tried it I used uh, two shims and the adjuster screw was too far out and the geometry was off now you can't go wrong with stock you know if you're buying these swivel feet and putting them on stock rockers everything being the same generally one of these sixty thousand shims is all you need to compensate and you should be back where you were if you go with this solid rocker shaft <coughs> and the one two point two five it seemed to me that one wasn't going to work and because and two was too much the other way so I robbed from one of my other sets that I wasn't using these 15,000 so the combination for this particular setup these are CB performance and you we you saw on the bench we were working back and forth and this was really the hard way of doing this on the car and you can imagine it had been even worse if it would have been if you'd have been crawling and trying to work from under a stock sedan application but the uh, as it turned out 160 and 115 for a total of 75 was the best that I could come up with the things that I had here to get a few threads out and to get it so the swivel feet weren't touching and to get my stroke and that may have affected the overall lift but what I discovered in this video by working this with you even though you know I kinda did that with the old setup the first try setup and I know some old timers were looking at that say oh no no that ain't right but that's what I did and I did correct it and I don't want to be known as somebody that does shoddy word and settles for less I do know better and I should be more cognitive about helping people that have never done this type of stuff before same thing with that flywheel change out I got hammered on that because uh, I didn't measure the end play before I changed the flywheel and then after I changed the flywheel and just sitting it on the floor over here and, and revving it I knew it was revving way too fast and I had the stock oil filter screen in there and I just decided I, I didn't want to do that so I put the stock uh, flywheel back on and that's the way we're gonna go ahead and run it and I think that'd be good this 1776 has a stock flywheel on it as well and I'm not ever gonna put the power pulley on here because everything on this is balanced to within a half a gram and I figured that this is the early style fan shroud not the 36 horse but the uh, you know 67 68 type and it's got the smaller fan in it and this one's got the doghouse cooler with the later fan so I'm thinking that the power pulley is going to help although I noticed idling the temperature of the engine did come up but as you'll recall this engine was running cooler anyhow and I don't have the thermostat or the rod but it does have 
the flappers. So, <clears throat> and this one, I believe, has got the flappers in it as well without a thermostat. And uh, that makes some people <laughs> roll over. <laughs> but it is what it is, and I know there's probably, at this stage of the game, 50 years later, there's probably more engines out there without the stock thermostat and flaps set up than there are the ones that were the way they left the factory. And it's hard to find those parts to add them if you don't have them. And there's so many fan shrouds out there because most people don't go long distances in these cars. They go to little local events. Some people trailer them. Uh, some people race them. And there's a number of excuses. <laughs> and that's all they are. The Baja, this has got a 2 liter, does have the thermostat, does have the flaps. And I drove it to Michigan and back like three or 4,000 miles and never had any trouble whatsoever. And uh, these are stock valve heads from CarCraft. And I get all the RPM I want. I've got more torque and power and this is this is a favorite of mine. Um, 1776 is also a favorite. And now that I'm, that I'm seeing what this 1600 does, I'm shocked. <laughs> I'm seriously shocked. This might make a great dirt road engine for my application. And I'm this this video is way 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 too long, so I just wanted to get something post up, and I got a few things to do today that aren't Volkswagen, so uh, I wanted to say thanks for watching, thanks for subbing, easy jeezy out, get out there and work on your project. All right, that pipeline just to the right of it is the road, but you can tell the steepness of it. That's my test hill. It'd be pretty tough to uh, find anything tougher anywhere. There's a lot of elevation change. You see that house up there, the roof, and there's some cars blending. I saw some sunlight off the windshields, but that's a steep climb. And then right at the top is the kicker. There's the pipeline. I'm third gear, 2000. Last time I saw some uh, deer, a bunch of does on the side of the road here. Oh, a deer, a female deer. Oh, a little break from the climb. Get all her breath back. Looks like it might get a little rain up here. You can see the town down there, so, I mean, we are climbing. There's not too many places in the country that have mountains like this that you can get into them. So we were starting at about 5,000 feet and I have no idea what it is at the top. I don't know, six or six and a half, seven. You tell me, there's the lake where the campground was. And here's the guardrail. I don't know why it has that hole right there didn't look like it was torn through it we're coming up to the uh, we're coming up to my test hill here I think I think I think I think last time there was a big old fat snake going across the road Shit, 
Are you kidding me? Where's that single port torque everybody was telling me about? Okay, we'll catch our breath. We're still in third. A little bit of a reprieve here. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. <laughs> I think I can. I think I can. Well, it really doesn't make any difference. And look at that. Look at that. I'll tell you right now, there ain't a whole lot of difference between this and that 1600. Now, that had the big four tips, the stock exhaust, the hot manifold, uh, ratio rockers on the intakes. This one has had no camshaft changes. That's it. That's it. By golly. That 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 was worth doing. And it's a lot cooler today. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Well, there, there you have it. Alright. So idle is uh, a little faster than I'd like. But it is all the way down. For sure, I want to feel the intake manifold. I didn't bring my temp gun. I always forget something. I thought I forgot the memory. Oh, ho, ho, ho. yeah, this is cold. It's not frosting, but this is cold. Not enough heat. I should put the friggin', you know, that would be the. Oh, that's an awesome idea. Can I have the uh, stock exhaust that you threw away for that new header system so I can run it from now on? This is nothing. There's no heat here, guys. There's no heat here. Oh, shit, no. Now that's got heat. There's just not enough crossover. That's hot. It's hot going in. And this one's warm. It's all it's all just body temperature down there. I mean there's just there's, you need heat. And this don't have it. And it's got a little rock. I uh I was uh, when I did that compression check, found out I had 20 pounds compression, uh, 120 per cylinder. This number four spark plug looked really bad, so I cleaned it up and I put it back in there. And uh, I I was gonna go on this test yesterday, but it wasn't running right, so it was running rough like right now. So I pulled that plug and it looked like it was. It didn't look as bad as it did the first time, but inside the cylinder, it looked wet. And I put a different spark plug in there, and I laid a spark plug on the, I took the spark plug wire and put a, 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 a third spark plug on this bolt over here and just watched it. And it looked like it was firing, so I was thinking it's uh, spark plug wire is okay. I might swap those two wires you know, put three on four and four on three and then switch it at the cap and see if the problem follows the plug. Might be a bad plug wire. Uh, I pulled it out at the cap. I don't, <laughs> I don't want to get knocked on my keister here and do it now. I don't have a glove. Yeah, I do. I'm just wearing them. Ugh. Sometimes, you know, it's just like looking for a, if you got a misfiring plug. I can see it firing hard in the sunlight, but it, it didn't change that much. Different spark plug. I'll measure the resistance when I get home. Or just change, put a different spark plug on from some wire on. Hmm. 
because it was spot on with the compression, 120. Well, there's home down there, and I'm just going to head back down the hill. Okay, guys, this is the test right here. This is the first section. It feels strong. At 2,000 RPM. That satisfied my curiosity. I don't know about yours. I'm I'm happy. I am happy. There's a look down where I live. Down in the high plains desert. So I wanna take the temp gun. Oh, I killed it. Oh that's okay. Ah, it's okay. I'm gonna get some readings here. I wanna, no, I wanna see what it is with it running. That's how I did it yesterday. And the time for that, <laughs> you're gonna do readings and take measurements, might as well be consistent, huh? This thing's still recording. 70 degrees on the intake, 177, 101, 134, man, number one cylinder is pretty cool, 233, 205, there we go. This aluminum is tricky. 234 on number four. One ninety-two on three, that don't sound right. Two twenty-seven. Okay, so all four cylinders are about two twenty. And uh, the manifold be uh, heat is better. 86 there. 86. Yeah, I got better manifold heat today. And that could, and the temperatures are even. That was a heck of a pull. It doesn't look like it's idling very smooth, does it? It's got a little shake to it. And this is the 1776. So all I did was uh, change the spark plug wires. And I added the uh, ratio rockers, the whole of solid rocker shaft assembly with the uh, 1.25 rockers on the intakes in the middle. So, well, that may, that, I'm glad I came up. That makes me feel better. Maybe I'll just leave the darn thing alone. Okay, so I hope that, uh, gives you some data to help you make your choices. The, the other thing, if I can find the crossbar linkage for those cadrons, that might be an odd option. Either do the cadrons or the the dual Webers. I don't know. What do you guys... Uh, I know you want to see them both, but what's, uh, what's more important to you? I mean, what's in your price range? I think typically for a stock 1600, 
I think those dual cadrons. If I can find that, if I can find that crossbar link linkage, we'll uh, stick it back in here with those dual cadrons and then hit this hill and see uh, what it does. Actually, the way I feel today, I feel like putting the 2110 in here. I'm getting a little bored with this hill. I'm gonna see what a bigger engine will do. <laughs> hey, I, I take the 2276 out of the sand car with those new spray bar 45 DeLordos. <laughs> now, I could get excited with that. I don't know when they're gonna open these parks. Okay, guys. Have a good one. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subbing. Easy Jeezy, out.